shut their doors. Today's lesson is about how to shade your drawing and the importance of tone and value when shading. Now tone and value have a different definition in art than in normal day use. The art definition for tone is the color produced by the pencil and the art definition of value is the darkness or lightness of a color. Now the most important thing to think about when drawing or shading a drawing is not about the shadows but the light. Where is your light source? There can be more than one light source but we're going to start simple first so let's go. Okay, we're going to be shading a sphere. So get a compass like this. If you don't have a compass, you can get a piece of string and tie it to the end of your pencil and go around like that. Just draw a circle, middle of your page. You can get one of these pencils, but for shading, one of these where it's you can sharpen it as sometimes better. Depends what you want to use. I actually like using the other ones. But this I like using this better, but it's slower. <laughs> so I'm gonna try using this and see if I can do it faster. Okay, so right now all you see is a circle, it's just a flat circle. It doesn't look like anything. But we want it to look like uh like a ball. So we need to think of where our light source is first. I'm going to make it right here. It's going to be shining down like that on the ball. So when you think where the light's coming, you want to go put the shadows directly opposite of the light. So since the light's coming here, we're going to put the shadows on this side. It's okay if you go out of the lines, especially doing this light one right here, because you can just erase that going back over. I actually think this looks a little bit dark, so I'm just going to erase that a little bit. Erase these, but right now it still doesn't look right because we need to continue to darken it. And it's going to gradually get darker from here to here, it's going to gradually become more and more dark because less light is getting there and well, that's what happens when less light gets there, it's more dark. This is turning out to be a such good video so far. I hope that things get better as I go on Cause if it doesn't I'm gonna be really really sad Oh really really sad, really really sad Really sad I'm gonna put a little bit more of the really light shadows up here I'm gonna erase it a tiny bit cause it's hard to get it really light Let's add a little bit darker right here. Okay. Now for the cast shadow. I went and reviewed my lesson on cast shadows. Because usually I just do it by eye. But I was trying to think of like a more uh, exact way to do it. Because I remember them teaching a more exact way to do it. And you can sort of line it up with the line of ruler up with the bleh, the light source sort of draw a little line here draw a little line here and you made it make a little triangle sort of shape and then we want to keep the shape of the the cast shadows and we keep the shape of the circle but it's going to stay See, I went out of it because I wasn't sure if I did the lines right, but I think that's, yeah, that's right. I'm not as good at measuring things and to figure things out, but I wanted to try 
to teach you those methods because it might help you better than the guessing way, which is better for me. So I'm trying to teach it even though I'm not very good at it. I finally figured out how you line it up because I know what I'm doing. Ha ha ha. That was a weird laugh. Now you're going to start shading it in. This is a cast shadow shape. But we're going to start shading in the shadow. We're not going to shade it in all exactly the same. Um, exactly the, sh the, shame, the same tone. We're going to change it. I just want to get lighter as it goes to the edge. So we need to not really show the lines anymore. Just make it really faint. Well, you can barely see the lines. Oh my gosh, I just noticed where I am on the camera. There. Hey, you see it a little better. We're going to be real dark in here. So this is getting the least amount of light. Just lighten it up. Try to keep it in a little bit of a circle shape so if you move your if you move your pencil in a circle shape it will help make it look more like a circle shape shadow like even though this is flat if you look on it head on it would be a little bit different looking I'm gonna erase a little bit to make it a little lighter on the edges Maybe a little bit lighter on the top. Let's do that. This part is real bright. So that is how you can shade something simple like a sphere. Okay, I want to also show you the importance of how two light sources can change how the shadows look. So let's say we have one light source up here one light source up here burr, 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 burr. shining both these ways now you're thinking how is this going to work do I just draw this exact same thing but on both sides well you sort of do but light reflects so it's a little bit different you start with the light shading again As you can see, I made two drop shadows. One that belongs this one, one that belongs this one. And where the shadows overlap, right here, be a little bit darker too. I didn't draw the lines this time to find where the cast shadow went. I didn't feel like it. You wanna leave a little bit of an edge on each side, don't go the darkest all the way to the edge so that it has a little bit of reflection lines. So I'm turning this around a lot, turning the page, probably making you dizzy. But it's hard to make your hand do like a curving motion. If it's like right here and I need to curve, I'm just like, Argh. it's easy if you turn the page and then let your hand curve with it. I'm gonna erase this dark line a little bit right here and right here to make it look a little bit more 3D. So that's two light sources of a sphere, and that's one light source of the same sphere. Okay, here I have four exactly the same pictures of CL Phantom Hive. Um, I want to show you how you can use shading, having light sources in different places, and you can use it on something more complex like a face. You can 
use it to show different kinds of emotion and different it just and how it changes the picture how it looks so that's what I was going to that's what that's what I'm doing today and you can download this picture and then I'll have it in the description and you can do it yourself if you want I'm basing this exercise off of this example in my art instruction school book so first is front view there, that will be front view. Symbol of light. When you want to shade a drawing, if you're not doing it from reference, like from your life or a photo, you have to think of the object sort of in 3D in your brain and sort of shade it in your mind that way. So I'm going to start shading the edges of his face a little bit. What was I going to say? I don't remember. I'll just stop talking now. Because all I ever say is nonsense. That, I'm putting a darker here because his hairpiece would sort of shade his ear here and also his face. So if the light is coming this way, that's how it would be. So that's why you have to always think about where the light is to think about where the shadows are. If that makes any sense at all. I drew these pictures customly because I didn't want there to be any shading on the pictures yet. I couldn't find one that didn't have any shading. I should have zoomed up on this from the beginning. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I wasn't. I hope this video is not a complete fail. This will be top. Light. Maybe I'll add these words to the picture whenever I put up the download. The top light is going to be pointing straight down on his head from the sky, <laughs> from a flashlight, from a candelabra. What are those things are called? Those fancy, fancy candles. Those fancy candles called, you know. Wait, I should have stopped right here. I had this shit right here. That looks so much better. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry about that. I said I was done, but I lied. song actually really applies to him. And Batman. They're both rich. They both lost their parents. And they're both just like darkness. Have you seen the Lego movie? It is really good. You should watch it. It has really catchy songs. And you will never get them out of your head for the rest of your life. I swear I'm going to be like 90 years old. And I'll still be singing those songs. They're just so catchy, especially the Batman's song. I think this is how he's lit all the time in the comic. <laughs> this looks about right. It's like, oh, look, this, this looks very much familiar. Very familiar lighting. Her neck. Pretty much all be black. Because it's completely in shadow because of your giant head. Just kidding, his head is like normal size. familiar yep this this definitely looks like how black butler tends to shade their people 
let's go now over to this guy right here. It's the same guy. And the light is going to come from right here. Well, I'm all wobbly. Now, Mr. Side Light. Oh, wait. I wrote Top Light? What? What am I doing? I just had so many fails today. It's not even funny. I wonder if you can even count them all. Okay. Mr. Side Light. I'm going to have the brightest over here and all the shadows coming from here. So let's start on this side. Fancy, fancy hair. In your fancy, 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 fancy hair. Oh my gosh! It's almost off the screen. How long has it been like that? Why didn't you tell me? I cannot believe you. I don't want the shadow to be angled a little bit this way. Of the sh of how that um, the light is. This is CL side light. This is CL bottom light. So the light's gonna be coming from down here pointing up at him right there. It's going to be dramatic. So I'm going to start up here. I usually just, when I'm shaking, I like to start at the darkest, sort of the darkest points first. Hardest. She does not have a mustache, guys. It's just the weird shading that makes it look like that. some smudges around the side of the picture. I'm smearing a little bit the and shading that can happen a lot. Okay looking at all these again I think the first one needs more shading because it just feels like it doesn't belong. To protect parts of picture so it doesn't smear you get like sticky tabs. Just do that. Now I won't smear that part. That looks a little bit better. So, what lighting do you think is your favorite lighting out of these four? My favorite is this one, but all of them would be good for different situations, of course. Now, when drawing a uh, shading something from life or from a picture, it's actually a lot easier because then you have the reference to show you, like, where, where exactly the shadows need to be. The only th thing that you might have a problem with is knowing how dark to make the shadows. And to help that, you can blur your vision by squinting to your, eye, your eyes or just looking like off into the distance past the picture, which is what I do instead of squinting my eyes. Just whatever you can do to blur your vision. And it helps you to see the values better and not be distracted with the details 
as much so you can focus on the values. So when you do that, it can help you to notice basically how dark to make your darks and how light to make your lights. No, he shouldn't come down. We should definitely kill the audience. What? Everything's happy here. La 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 la